Having returned to Ocean Fox after the winter break, our plan was to make our way back to Europe, taking in the north coast of Cuba, the Bahamas, Florida, before heading to Bermuda, onto the Azores and the Portuguese mainland. But things rarely go according to plan. We never made it to Florida or the north coast of Cuba. We pick up our story here in Nassau. Well, we're just leaving Nassau. Uh, we've been here for over a week, yep. trying to get a visa for the States. And this coronavirus thing is uh, changing our plans, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Um, due to quite a few reasons, I think we're going to have to miss out uh, going to Florida. Yeah, um, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's going to be too difficult to get there. It's going to be too expensive to get there. We're going to get a $500 fine for going. So uh, I think we're going to spend a few, another month in the Bahamas and then uh, as soon as we find a decent weather window we're going to go to Bermuda and start making our way back to Europe. Yeah. Oh, we'll get that, there. That, that, that's the plan for now, it might yeah, change in a week. <laughs> in yeah. We decided to make our way north to the Berry Islands before crossing to the Abaco Islands where we would hide out for a month from the pandemic and wait for a weather window go to Bermuda, if Bermuda is open. As it happened, we left the Berry Islands. They are one of the least visited groups of islands in the Bahamas. Stunning waters, golden beaches and plenty of wildlife. A bit of a problem. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's stupid. All the islands are refusing the boats to go ashore. Most of the islands, the family islands, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we only we only want to go ashore to provision the boat and get ready to cross the Atlantic. And uh, we need to put fuel. To no, they won't give us fuel. Yeah. So you're kind of stuck, really. Yeah, we have it stuck because we, had, we were on the way to this uh, green turtle cave and the boat just passed by us and just... Yeah, uh, we said it's closed. It's closed. So, we don't really know what's going to happen. No. Nope. <laughs> we might start eating uh, rice with pasta. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Okay, if we've got rice and pasta. We do. Yeah. It's stupid. It's really stupid because Everybody on their boats isolated. Yeah. And, uh, they are afraid of us to bring the disease ashore, but we are afraid right. to get from them. That's yeah. the other way around, isn't it? Because we haven't been anywhere. We have been on the boat for the last two weeks, yeah. not going ashore, not going anywhere. So, and all the boats are doing the same, really. We don't see the cruises going anywhere. No. After two weeks, we managed to creep ashore just after first light to provision for our Atlantic crossing to Bermuda. Okay, so we came ashore to go for propane and the supermarket. And also we need to go to immigration to yeah, check out. Check out. And the security guard just came along and said that uh, we are not really allowed, the cruisers are not allowed to go ashore, but he was going to let us go. It's not entirely true actually, no. uh, as far as I understand, you can only go ashore for all things like uh, supermarket and propane, diesel, that sort of thing. You can't go ashore for a stroll around yeah. until Wednesday. Until on Wednesday, Wednesday we can't go ashore. No, yeah, from Wednesday 9pm uh, the lockdown will be until yeah. next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, so we just left the anchorage um, in, uh, what's the name of this anchorage? Oh, it's a uh, okay. okay. And yeah, going. What's your thought, Simon? I'm apprehensive. I don't know why. I'm just kind of nervous. I think once I get out of there, we've got five miles to go to the cut, and then we're through and into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. I think once we get out there, we get the sails done, it'll be fine. It's just sort of. We are actually leaving uh, two hours earlier than three, the three hours earlier. Yeah. 
Yeah, because um, at the other end, when we arrive, it's a bit uh, headwind, yeah. so we are trying to avoid that. But uh, we feel confident with um, Charlie guiding us on. We missed the baby option really because we've got our uh, um, predicament working on our laptops, so we're going to get the grid files, and we've got his recommendations coming in. So I think we can't do any more really. No. And this is probably about as good a weather window as we're going to get, even if we wait another two weeks. So. nervous coming out the cuts isn't it because yeah. of the rocks you are just so close to the rocks it makes me a bit nervous to me at least it's not great no. but anyway it wasn't too bad it wasn't as bad as it could be and uh, we got all the main cell up do you know about two weeks in do you know one in the main cell it's a bit more blurry than i was expecting it's yeah uh, but it's so 25 30 knots it's um, gonna get better isn't yeah, it yeah it's gonna, gonna get, get better. better and we're on the we're on the wind at the moment and uh, you know, we're going to have to get up, we will be off the bridge, so they can only get better. The yeah. sea's not too bad. No, it's not. And all went well. For now. Yeah. yeah. It won't always gets worse yeah. further away. <laughs> So this is the first night, uh, it's around about uh, 10 o'clock, it's dark to us and uh, it's, it hasn't really been what I was expecting, I was expecting the wind to be a lot more of a beam, in fact it's been close for already, 60 degrees is our as close to wind as we go and it's been about 60, 70 degrees right off the nose and uh, blowing anything up to 30, 32 knots so it's been a bit banged. It is going to come round, it is coming round, um, it's just taking longer than uh, we had hoped so hopefully by tomorrow morning we'll have a bit more of a broad reach taking place and then we should be able to make up a bit of time. We haven't done too badly, uh, we've had quite a lot of uh, six and a half, seven 7.5 knot hours, but at, um, the last three hours will be down under six knots, which is not good. That's partly because of the size of the waves, I think. And at the moment, I've got one reefing on, extra reefing, you know, and I don't need it. So that's slowing me down. But uh, we'll keep going. We haven't got any choice. Well, that's been one hell of a night, I can tell you. Uh, we really weren't expecting that. We were uh, well, just hit over 50 knots in the end. Uh, on the foot, I think it says 49.9 uh, true wind speed. And it was so rough. It was unbelievable. And in the dark as well, it's horrible. Um, it lasted for about uh, three hours, but when it got to 50 knots, uh, Carl and I took the mainsail down and uh, we had three reefs in the Genoa and we just turned down the wind slightly so that we could uh, bear away. That did help a little bit, got the wind behind us. Um, two hours later it's dropped off, which is good. 
it's sort of between 25 and 30 now, and we've got uh, one reef in the Genoa, no mainsail, and one engine running mainly the um, But that's bobbing us along at six knots. The problem was we were doing 11. Uh, I really felt that was too fast for the conditions, and that's what sort of made me get rid of the mainsail. It's been a strange day, really, because. Uh, that gale that we were in last night, which was storm force 10, and uh, dropped off slowly during the morning and got to a point where there was really no wind at all, only around about 5 to 10 knots. And uh, we're motoring. And uh, it's been a bit iffy all day, really. We've had little bits and little periods of motoring, but uh, now it's just piped up. It's half past 4 in the morning quarter to five and it's just piped up to 30 knots and I've put a reef in the mainsail and two in the genera and we're bombing along at between seven and eight knots um, which is good because we've lost a few hours uh, with the lack of wind. Um, I think Kyla's starting to feel a bit better but she's sort of kind of done her two days nearly now and uh, yeah that's uh, terrible. Terrible. So the uh, lines holding up the uh, lazy bag, the lazy jack lines, uh, on the pull side has snapped and the bag's come down and the rope has uh, come out altogether. So we're going to go and make a temporary fix. We're going to use the topping lift off the end of the boom and tie that onto the uh, bit of rope off the lazy jack and use that. We'll run with that uh, topping lift. We don't. Well, Why don't you use the one from the code seal? Because we're not going to use the code seal. Well, I could actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Well, okay. I don't think there's any reason why we can't use it. Is there a reason? Yeah, we'll use that. Okay, we'll use that one. Yeah, we'll use the code seal handle. Okay. Right. As the weather settled, Carla found her sea legs as she recovered from the first three days of seasickness. During the day, with better weather, we'd fish and tidy the boat. Ah, he's gone! one of those weird things when the auto helm stopped functioning it came up on the screen here and before I got up on deck we were almost head to wind and the autopilot just stopped for some reason I don't know whether it was uh, low voltage the batteries were about 75% or uh, it was just one of those Raymarine glitches that you get every now and then but uh, I'm making good progress um, we're doing over 7.3 7 knots nautical miles an hour uh, it's pretty rough actually, and uh, it's a lot bumpier than I was expecting. We've been motoring today for the last 24 hours, that is a shame, unfortunately, but uh, it's not enough wind. It's uh, supposed to start picking up now, so let's hope that we can turn off the engines tonight. And um, yeah, we are nearly arriving in Bermuda, another day, just another day and uh, we are really anxious to know what's going to happen um, 
we know we know we're going to be in quarantine for 14 days, which is okay. It's no problem. But we don't know what's going to happen after that. If they're going to give us the 72 hours to leave, or they're going to let us stay. Uh, we really would like to stay. Uh, this is another country in our journey that we would like to explore and um, yeah, see things around. Same thing is about uh, Azores. Uh, we really want to explore the Azores, but we don't know what's going to happen there. But time will tell. Uh, but we really like to go around and see. Um, I'm Portuguese, but I have never been in Azores, so it's a new place that I really would like to go and see. Dobby, you're touching the screen. Oh, Dobby, don't do that. And, um, yeah, my father born in uh, Azores, so he's looking. He's really looking forward to see the videos there. Uh, so if we can't go out of the boat and look around and make the videos, it's going to be um, disappointed for him, I think. Um, but hopefully, because it's still like a month, if they allow us to stay two weeks after the two weeks in quarantine in Bermuda, so it's another month plus another two weeks on the journey, so it's a month and a half to arrive in Azul, so hopefully things will be better by then. Uh, respecting the coronavirus thing, so and they will allow us to stay. That's our hopes, yes. But for now, we're really anxious to arrive in Bermuda. Yeah, it's not um, it's 200 and what was it? 239 nautical miles to go. So, we've had another little disaster, and that is that the main halyard has snapped. It kind of, uh, where it comes out of the top of the mast and comes down to the sail, it has happened before where it started to wear against the metalwork on the main, on the um, uh, mast. And on the last Atlantic cross we managed to catch it before it wore through, but this time it just came snap, bang, twang, down came the main sail all in one go. It must be the pressure, the, the pressure the other day with uh, the wind, wind too strong. Yeah, I bet you that's what it was. So we've uh, taken the topping lift off. And uh, we supported the boom on the laser jack lines, one of which is snap. And uh, so we're using the Code Zero halyard to hold the lazy jacks up, which is holding the boom up. And we're using the topping lift to hold the main sail up. But if that one goes, we're absolutely stuffed, to say the least. So we've got two days to go. And the wind's piped up again, we're up at 20 knots, 21 knots. We're sailing along at six, over six, and no engines again. So we, we keep the engines into touch for a little while which is good news. Bermuda Radio, Bermuda Radio, this is your Ocean Fox, Ocean Fox, over. Ocean Fox, this is uh, Bermuda Radio, uh, good morning. Understand you are uh, inbound for uh, Bermuda. Uh, the local time here is 0544. Uh, what, what's your ETA over? Uh, we're currently 10 miles from, uh, we're 10 miles west, southwest of Gibbs Hill, and uh, to the lighthouse up in Georgetown, we have about. 25 miles to go, which is about four and a half hours over. Yeah, that's uh, over it seems about four and a half hours, and um, yeah, we have your uh, your pre-arrival information and your your health information. So, uh, are you uh, familiar okay, with? Okay, so your we are just uh, uh, arriving in the we are, we're just coming around the uh, St David's Headland and around the lighthouse and I've got to radio the uh, radio people up and tell them we're here again. They know we're here but I've got to tell them again. And uh, it's taken us uh, four days and 23 hours. It's been an adventure. It hasn't been the best trip in the world, no? No, especially the first night. Yeah. Do you reckon this was uh, our second worst? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. But we did have 50 knots of wind, which was a bit too much. Yeah. And it always, it's always in the middle of the night. That's what yep. uh, upsets me. Yep. Because everything happens in the middle of the night when you can't see anything. And, uh, you know, you have to just do it. And we had a few breakages as well. We had the uh, lazy bag line break. We had the uh, lay down here break. Uh, but that was caused by the uh, lazy down on the top car of the uh, main cell that had a broken which yeah, then we wouldn't have lost the main cell. Yeah, the bow spit in the water. Bow spit in the water, everything's, yeah. everything's gone wrong really. Yeah. But we're okay. None of it was mission critical. Yeah. <laughs> the tired. tired, yeah. Go in here, check it and get a bed.